All right, so today we're diving into something I think a lot of us have probably daydreamed about at some point, making money online. Definitely. Who hasn't seen those ads promising like crazy money for just working from your couch? Exactly. And that's kind of what sparked this whole deep dive. We're talking about MailChimp's guide, uh, how to make money online. 25 proven side hustle ideas. Yeah, it's a jungle out there when it comes to online opportunities. That's the thing, right? Like, how do you even know where to begin? Well, that's where a trusted guide can be super helpful. This MailChimp guide, they actually start by debunking a big myth, getting rich quickly online. I was just going to say, isn't that everyone's fantasy to, like, win the internet lottery and never have to work again? Right. But MailChimp's point is, those overnight riches, mm -hmm. rarely real. Okay, so then what's the real deal? What are they actually saying about making money online? Well, they stress leveraging your existing skills and interests, which I think is a great segue into the whole proven side hustles thing. Yeah, because it's not about chasing some shiny object. It's about finding what fits, you know? Totally. And, and speaking of fit, I saw this stat from Bankrate last year, 2023, that really jumped out at me. 39% of working Americans have a side hustle. Wait, seriously? Almost half of us are out there hustling on the side. That's what they're saying. And they're making an average of $810 a month doing it. Okay, that's not chump change. But it also kind of makes you wonder, what's everyone doing? Like, what are these side hustles? Exactly. And it shows you that while it's definitely possible to make money online, it's not a guarantee. Makes sense. It's not like you just sign up and the money magically appears in your account. Right. It takes work, strategy. Which is where this deep dive comes in handy. So MailChimp breaks these side hustles down into two main categories. Online businesses, things like blogging, YouTube, affiliate marketing, and then e-commerce. And those are pretty broad categories. So for someone who's just starting to explore this, what are the core differences they should keep in mind? Yeah, like how do you even choose between building an online empire versus like selling stuff? Well, with online businesses, it's more about building a platform, a brand, mm -hmm. you know? It takes time, but you have a lot of creative control. Okay, so it's more of a slow burn, but you're building something that's really yours. Exactly. Whereas with e-commerce, you could potentially see results faster, but the competition is fierce. So it's like the classic tortoise and the hare scenario. Kind of, yeah. Mm. But regardless of which path speaks to you, market research is crucial. Always. you got to know your audience, right? Absolutely. And finding your niche, that's key for both online businesses and e-commerce. Niche down, stand out. I love that. Okay, so to make this even more helpful for our listeners, let's zoom in on a few specific side hustle ideas that stood out from the guide. Sounds good. It's always helpful to get into the nitty gritty. Right. So first up, freelancing. I feel like everyone knows someone who's freelancing these days. It's definitely exploded in popularity. The guide actually highlights Upwork, saying they have like over 2 million jobs listed. Wow, 2 million. That's insane. What kind of jobs are we talking about? Everything from, you know, writing and graphic design to virtual assistants and even things like legal consulting. So basically, if you have a skill, someone's probably looking for it online. Pretty much. And get this. The guide says there are 15 million freelancers on Upwork and it's free to join. OK, but with that many freelancers, how do you even stand out? That's where a strong portfolio comes in and client relationships. So it's not just about like churning out work and hoping for the best. No, you got to think of it like you're building a business, even if it's just you. Consistent quality is key. Makes sense because happy clients lead to more work, right? Exactly. All right, let's switch gears to something a little more, I don't know, visual. Starting a YouTube channel. Ooh, yeah. Instead of just watching YouTube, you're creating content and getting paid for it. That's the dream, right? And the guide mentions a bunch of ways YouTubers make money, ads, sponsorships, even selling merch. It's pretty incredible how much the platform has evolved. Totally. The guide really emphasized that the most successful YouTubers are passionate about their niche, whatever that is, travel, cooking, gaming, you name it. Authenticity is key, for sure. People mm -hmm. can spot a fake a mile away. It's so true. You can tell when someone's just going through the motions versus when they're genuinely excited about something. Right. It's about connecting with your audience on a deeper level. So it's not just about the views or the subscribers. It's about building a community around your content. 100%. Okay. What else caught your eye in the guide? Well, this one sounds almost too good to be true. Drop shipping. Have you heard of this? Yeah. It's been getting a lot of buzz lately. Basically, you sell products online, but you don't actually handle any inventory. 
Right. So you're like the middleman. Yeah. You find suppliers, list their products on your online store, and when someone orders, the supplier handles the rest. Sounds pretty sweet in theory. But what's the catch? The biggest challenge with drop shipping is competition. Since the barrier to entry is relatively low, it can be tough to stand out. So how do you avoid getting lost in the shuffle? Niche selection is huge. You really have to find those underserved markets, even within larger categories, to be profitable. So instead of trying to be everything to everyone, you're better off specializing. Exactly. It's about becoming the go-to source for a specific audience. Makes sense. It's all about finding your lane in that vast online marketplace. Exactly. Okay, so we've talked about selling products, but this guide also highlights online tutoring. Oh yeah, that makes sense. With so many people embracing online learning these days, there's definitely a demand for it. Right, and the guide makes a good point. You don't have to be a certified teacher to be successful with online tutoring. Oh really? So what are they saying? Just having expertise in a subject is enough. Yeah, whether it's like math, music, even something like coding, if you've got the knowledge, you can share it. It's a good reminder that everyone has something to offer. For sure. And the guide actually suggests incorporating interactive elements into online lessons using storytelling. Because who wants to listen to a boring lecture, whether it's online or in person? Exactly. Keep it engaging. Speaking of engaging audiences, the guide also gets into being an influencer. Okay, before you say anything, I know, I know, the influencer thing can feel kind of overhyped. Totally get it, but the guide actually does a good job of cutting through the noise. Oh yeah, how so? They emphasize that the best influencers are actually experts in their niche, you know? They've built trust by consistently providing value. It's more than just selfies and sponsored posts. It's about using your knowledge to actually connect with people. Precisely. And they often diversify their income streams, affiliate marketing, creating their own products. Okay, so it can be a legit business. It's not just about getting free stuff. Right, it takes strategy, just like any other business. Okay, ready to switch gears again? Get me with it. How about website building as a side hustle? Ooh, interesting. Is this something anyone can do? Or do you have to be like a tech whiz? You definitely don't need to be a coding genius anymore. The guide even mentions platforms like MailChimp that have user-friendly builders and templates. Wait, so even if I can barely check my email, I could potentially build a website for someone's business. It's more about design sensibility and understanding what a client wants. Huh, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. So you're still using creativity and problem solving skills just in a different way. Exactly. Okay, I think we need a quick recap because we've covered a lot of ground already. Seriously, we've gone from freelance writing to YouTube stardom to building websites. And we're not even done yet. MailChimp has a lot more to say. But I think the key takeaway so far is that there are tons of different ways to potentially make money online. Absolutely. It's about finding the right fit for your skills and interests. Which is what this whole deep dive is about. All right. You ready to dive into the next one? Bring it on. What do we got? Let's talk about the stock market. Ooh, the stock market. It's always seemed a bit intimidating, to be honest. It can definitely feel overwhelming at first, all those numbers and graphs. But you know, the guide makes it sound a lot more approachable than I would have thought. Really? What are they saying? Well, for starters, you don't have to be rich to get started. Oh, you mean you don't have to be like a Wall Street tycoon to invest in the stock market? Exactly. Many platforms have low or even no minimum balance requirements to start investing. Hmm, that's interesting. So it's more accessible than I realized. Absolutely. And of course, like any investment, there are risks involved. Yeah, you're not going to get rich quick, that's for sure. Right. It's about educating yourself, understanding those risks, and maybe starting small as you learn the ropes. Okay, that actually makes me feel a little bit better about it. So it's not just blindly throwing money at stocks and hoping for the best. No, not at all. It's about making informed decisions. Got it. Informed decisions, not impulsive ones. Okay, what else does the guide highlight? Well, this one caught my eye, selling art and photography online. Oh, that's cool. I feel like platforms like Etsy and Shopify have really opened doors for artists. For sure. It's incredible how technology has made it possible to, like build your own brand, and reach a global audience. It's like the middleman has been removed, so to speak. You're connecting directly with your customers. And it's not just physical art anymore. Digital art and design are huge, too. Oh, yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. Like, What kind of stuff are we talking about? Everything from illustrations and graphics to like website templates and social media graphics. The demand is there. So if you've got design skills, there's definitely a market for it online. Absolutely. 
Okay, ready for another one. Always. Lay it on me. How about online translation? Have you ever considered that as a side hustle? I've thought about it, but I always assumed you had to be, like, a certified translator or something. Well, qualifications definitely help, especially for certain types of translations. But the guide stresses that it's about more than just speaking another language. It's about fluency in a particular field, right? Yeah. Like, translating medical documents would require a different skill set than translating, say, a marketing brochure. Exactly. It's about understanding the nuances of language, cultural context, all of that. So it's not as simple as just plugging something into Google Translate and calling it a day. Not at all. Accuracy is crucial, especially when you're dealing with important documents or specialized content. Okay, let's pause there for a sec because I know we're moving through these quickly. Okay, so we've covered a lot of these online money-making ideas, but I'm curious, have you ever tried selling clothes online? You know, I actually have. It's kind of addictive once you get started. Right. I've heard it's a great way to declutter and maybe make a few bucks. Exactly. And the guide even mentions some popular platforms for this, like Poshmark and ThreadUp. Yeah, I've definitely seen those popping up everywhere. But I'm guessing it's not as easy as just snapping a pic and posting it right. Well, the guide emphasizes taking good photos and writing detailed descriptions, which makes sense. It's like you're creating your own little online storefront. Exactly. you got to make those clothes stand out. Okay, I want to circle back to something we kind of touched on earlier podcasting. Oh, right. I mean, yeah. we're doing it right now, so it only makes sense. Exactly. And the guide actually lists it as a potential side hustle, which I thought was interesting. Okay, so how does that work? Do people just, like, start a podcast and hope for the best? Well, the guide talks about different ways podcasters make money. Things like sponsorships, ads, even listener donations. That makes sense, especially with so many people listening to podcasts these days. Right. There's definitely an audience for it, but it's also a competitive space. For sure. So what's the key to standing out in the world of podcasts? Well, the guide emphasizes, again, finding your niche, having high quality audio, and of course, engaging content. Okay, so the same principles apply, whether you're selling clothes online or launching a podcast. Pretty much. It's all about finding your audience and delivering value. All right, ready for something a little different? Always. Hit me. What about online coaching or consulting? Ooh, that's a good one. I feel like that's perfect for people who love helping others. Exactly. And the guide talks about establishing credibility, maybe showcasing certifications, testimonials, things like that. So it's about building trust, showing potential clients that you know your stuff. Exactly. And then, of course, there's the tech side of things, video calls, online courses, all that. That's like running a business, just virtually. Pretty much. And the cool thing is you can connect with people all over the world. Okay, so we've talked about coaching, but what about, like, being a virtual assistant. Oh, yeah, that's another one the guide mentions. It's a huge field right now. Makes sense with so many businesses going remote. Totally. And the tasks are really varied. Email management, scheduling, research. It just depends on the client's needs. So it's a good option for someone who's super organized and good at multitasking. Absolutely. Okay, one more before we wrap things up. Let's do it. Yeah. What else did MailChimp have to say about making money online? They mention online courses. Oh, online courses, yeah. That's a big one. I feel like everyone and their dog has an online course these days. Right. But the guide makes a good point. It's a fantastic way to reach a global audience and potentially generate passive income. Okay, so it's not just a fad. It can actually be a viable business model. Exactly. And platforms like Udemy and Teachable have made it so easy to create and sell courses. You're basically packaging your knowledge into a digital product. Precisely. It's super interesting stuff. It really is. Wow, we covered so much ground today. From freelance gigs, to starting a YouTube channel, to selling your old clothes online. It's amazing how many different ways there are to potentially make money online these days. It's a little overwhelming, to be honest, but in a good way. I agree. I think the key takeaway is you got to find what works for you. 100%. What are your strengths, your interests? Mm -hmm. And then you can start exploring opportunities that align with those things. Exactly. Don't be afraid to experiment and see what sticks. And most importantly, have fun with it. Because at the end of the day, it's called a side hustle for a reason, right? Mm. It should be something you enjoy, not just another chore on your to-do list. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, there you have it, folks. A deep dive into the world of online side hustles brought to you by MailChimp and their awesome guide. Hopefully you feel inspired and maybe even a little bit empowered to start exploring some of these ideas for yourself. Until next time, happy hustling.